Hi, I'm Reagan Tunstall. Thanks for joining me tonight. We're going to talk about the math warm-up. So we're going to talk about what is the purpose behind it, and then I'm also going to show you three different math warm-ups, a kinder, a second, and a fourth, so that we can really kind of see how we can get the same procedure out of that math warm-up in any grade level. So let's start with what is the purpose of a math warm-up. The purpose of a math warm-up is to allow your students to explore mathematical thinking together. So you want to um, provide that opportunity so that students have a chance to explain their thinking and to share that with their peers. So I'm looking for four targeted mathematical developments to happen during this, but truly that simple form overall arching purpose is just mathematical thinking. So what I'm truly designing in the background is I want my students to be working on conceptual understanding. Conceptual understanding is huge, but it's something that we don't necessarily focus as much attention on in math. So typically we like to focus on procedural math. Procedural math is my step-by-step, -step, how do I solve a problem and get the right answer. But conceptual understanding is what is the relationship of the numbers? Why are they changing? How are they changing? And it's truly providing that backbone, that foundation that's going to help our students be better problem solvers. But it's the understanding that has to happen behind the scenes. For example, if, um, if I'm talking about fractions, it's allowing students to touch and to see different fraction sizes and compare them and giving them that foundation of what does one fourth look like? What happens when I lay two thirds over five eighths? And just allowing them to see what those fractions look like and how they compare. So with, with any math concept that we have, it's that background information. All right, I also want to focus on, of course, building up computational fluency. So is there a way that I can repeatedly allow this practice that's going to build up that automaticity and fluency, perhaps um, engaging them in some sort of connection that we hadn't gotten to that's going to help bring that to um, a place that's more solidified so that when they're doing their computation, it's, it's more... Um, automatic and more fluid. Next is strategic competence. So this is huge. Um, can my students with confidence choose a strategy and carry it through to the end? Not only can they do it, but can they express that understanding? One of the areas that we are weak in um, as of late mathematically, just as a nation, is that students can't communicate their understanding and express that both verbally and written. So we want to provide those opportunities. Whether they can or can't, there's a peer that's going to kind of set that example for them and provide that um, in a way that they may understand better coming from a peer. Next is I'm going to look for adaptive reasoning. So this is one of those things that we develop over time as we're doing these math warm-ups. So allowing my students to not only be confident in the strategies and methods that they are sharing, but also that they take what another peer says and go and apply it to their own understanding and to what they know to be true for them. And that will just continue to mature them and to build those connections, which then in turn brings out computation, fluency, all of it. It's all related. So those are the four areas that I'm truly looking for when we're having our math discussion in that math warm-up time. Now, you and I generally know how our class is going to answer a math problem that we pose to them. But what we really want to focus on is does this particular prompt that I'm choosing allow them to spiral review what they know, allow them to go deeper with it as they mature mathematically through the year. Does it allow for multiple strategies? Does it allow um, students ample discussion? 
So I want to be choosing things that hit all my standards throughout the year, but provide that um, opportunity for continual development and expression of ideas. So let's take a look at three different math warmups. And the first one is going to come from Guided Math, fourth grade. This is the fraction unit, unit five. Now these um, Guided Math kits can be done in any order to meet your scope and sequence, as well as the lessons within them. They can be um, rearranged to meet your scope and sequence of your district. So what we're gonna do is take a look in the teacher's guide for the math warmup, because in fourth, third, fourth, and fifth, our math warmup is going to come in the format of a problem of the day. Um, so you would have a week's worth on one page. You could certainly run it off as a black line. You could also just focus in on that and project it to the class as you solve. So for my example today, we're gonna we're in fractions, remember? So we are going to do lesson number seven, math warm-up. And in lesson number seven, we are reviewing how to um, put fractions into their simplest form. So our question of the day is, uh, it's gonna be tricky for me to read this and show you. The fraction has been partially put in its simplest form, complete the fraction. So you would show them that you have 4 sixteenths and it's changing to something over four. So you would then have students sharing out strategies. You would also provide any manipulatives or background knowledge, conceptual understanding that could be helpful for students, such as um, fraction blocks, fraction strips, a um, fraction chart that shows the different um, fractions together, any kind of manipulative that's going to help them. But you also um, want to allow for a variety of answers, both conceptual and procedural. So that's what that's going to look like in fourth grade. Now in K1 and 2, our math warm-up looks different as our mathematical minds are development, developmentally different. So this is second grade, unit 3, which is um, addition and subtraction. The math warm-ups for K1 and 2 come on a poster and they go by day of the week alliterations. So this would go in a common area where you're going to pull your kids for your math meeting. We're gonna do, let's do Tricky Tales Tuesday. I'm gonna read that to you. So this is second grade. Um, Tricky Tales Tuesday, so tr truly what I do on Tricky Tales Tuesday is it's a reteach time. It's a time to say, hey, we're getting tricked on something. Let's go back and analyze. So it's teaching them how to have a different perspective when they look at a math problem and to be willing to analyze it. So Tricky Tales Tuesday, on this particular um, string of math warmups, what we're gonna be focusing on is what are the key details in my word problem and are there is there any unnecessary information that is throwing me off or not aligning to what I need to solve? So for this one, it says, write a math story on the board with extra and unnecessary information in it. So then when you question through that word problem, help students know the information that they need to solve and cross out any information that is not needed. So for this particular problem, that's exactly what we would do. You can choose problems right out of the unit and rewrite them with added information. You can choose something from an upcoming assessment, something from um, a, an assignment that you had before that you want to review. So Tricky Tales is kind of a reteach, but it's also infusing a new focus in there and allowing you to have students analyze. All right, and then now we're gonna do a kindergarten warm-up. This comes from Shapes and Solids, which is unit five in kindergarten. And again, these can be taught in any order. I know a lot of us in kinder start with Shapes and Solids at the beginning. So it does not matter how you want to do that and how you, if you wanna break it up over the course of the year. 
So for our warm up today in Kinder, and again, we have our days of the week alliteration poster. I'm gonna focus on Friendly Friday. Now to start Friendly Friday, I would certainly do this teacher versus student because I want students to understand it before they're doing it friend to friend. Um, so this one is all about understanding combinations of five, so friends of five. So I would say, boys and girls, we have some snap cubes here. How many do we have? And we would talk about the different ways that we knew that this was a five. Students sharing their different ways of thinking. And then I would say, all right, boys and girls, we're gonna play a little game. So we have five cubes, and I would simply have a bowl or some sort of um, a piece of paper, something I can hide some cubes under. I could also just do it behind my back and say, okay, I have um, broken off some of my five and I'm gonna show you what I have left. I have three left. Do you know how many cubes are behind my back or are hiding under our bowl or whatever it might be? And students have to reason through how they know that there are two cubes hiding. So whatever method they have for understanding that five. And you would, you would share out the, those different ideas and you could record or you could have um, snap cubes, whatever you wanted them to use to understand. But that is the game of um, Friendly Friday. So for this particular group of Friendly Fridays, we're focusing on combinations to five. And you could certainly increase that to 10 or whatever target number you had um, as time went on. All right, so I hope that these different explanations of math warm-ups have been helpful, but the true purpose behind any math warm-up is a meeting of the math minds, allowing students to share mathematical thinking and to target conceptual understanding, strategic competence, computational fluency, and adaptive reasoning. Thanks, have a great night.